morning. Uh, got through the weekend. I hope you guys had a good weekend. And I know you got a lot of information from the coordinators already. <clears throat> but um, probably one of the things I know I'll get asked is about injuries. And so uh, just hit on a couple guys probably that will come up. Um, Cole Adams uh, got hurt in the upper, upper extremity injury. And uh, you know, we'll kind of see how he goes through the week here. Um, we went ruling him out. But uh, you know, I think probably be very limited early, and uh, we'll see how it goes throughout the week there. But um, and then uh, Pritchett um, played, you know, in the game as you saw last I think six plays or so, and uh, came out good uh, with that. Um, you know, practice towards the end of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, a little limited, more limited on Wednesday, and as the week went on, uh, practiced uh, and. Felt, felt OK about him being out there. Uh, felt good about him being out there. And he came in and did a nice job. And uh, the big thing is that he got through healthy. And that was a, that was a key there. And then uh, Caden uh, Proctor, uh, you know, he will continue to work on his functional movement and all that kind of stuff uh, early in the week and keep progression uh, in a way where I feel you know we're going to be pretty dang close uh, by the weekend of getting him on the football field. So I um, feel like he's. Uh, He's coming along real well, uh, especially at the end of last week, working extremely hard to get back out there. Uh, I know a lot of the, a lot of the things uh, that both coordinators talked about. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that you know needs to be worked on was pretty obvious. I think sometimes you look at a game and maybe statistics don't show uh, the things that we know as a staff we need to work on. I think pretty obvious uh, penalties and and ter take away turnovers, uh, creating takeaways and, and limiting the turnovers uh, is a high priority. Uh, it always is, uh, not something that uh, we don't take lightly. It's something that's an emphasis every single day. So we'll continue to do that. And uh, there were some highlights, I thought, when you, that you can take from the game, uh, both sides of the ball as a team, uh, continue to fight, continue to play. Didn't feel like our guys ever came up short with the amount of energy and effort. I think they had a ton of energy and want to before the game uh, at halftime. I thought they regrouped. thought both sides were holding themselves accountable for the things that uh, they knew they needed to clean up. Uh, we cleaned up some of those things, I think, in the second half. Other issues presented themselves. Uh, and you know, in the end, though, you know, they're going to find a way. And uh, they kept fighting. They kept playing together. Uh, they, they took it on themselves and individually, uh, their unit, uh, to go make the plays and trust the other side of the ball uh, that they'd get it done as well. So I'm proud of that piece. Uh, tomorrow, go back to work. Uh, today's their, their day off from practice. And uh, the guys came in yesterday uh, excited, ready to go uh, with the challenge that lies ahead with Wisconsin. And uh, there's, there's really no, there is no other option other than just go to work tomorrow. And I know we're going to have uh, a great Tuesday. Questions? Charlie? Yeah, hey, Coach. Just given what he went through last week, just how proud are you of the way that Q Robinson played on Saturday and, and went through that? Yeah, he's played a couple of really good games here uh, in the two games we've played. So uh, I'm, I'm proud of him. I told him that after the game. And I thought about him a couple of times when I saw him out there flying around. And uh, I know there was a couple of emotional times, I think, that he went through uh, in the game. Uh, but. He's just a special guy all around. You know, it's 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 you see everyone sees him as a player, but being around him and who he is as a person, he he loves this program. Uh, he is a guy that just everyone everyone looks to as being consistent. I think, and and for him to, you know, really get back here, have some urgency getting back here, and feel like he wanted to be around this team uh, the latter half of the week. Um, it just shows everything that I said, you know, about his commitment to wanting to be here and help this program every single day be the best we can be. So, um, he, you know, a lot of emotions I know for him, and I was proud of the way he played, and he's he's done a great job here through two games. Does it build the room to Emily Grace? Coach, can you walk me through the play calling process and what your input is on each play? Yeah, uh, Coach Sheridan, uh, you talking offense? Yeah, yeah okay, offense. Uh, Coach Sheridan calls the plays throughout a drive. Um, obviously, I can override something if it is, but I know as a play caller, I haven't done it for 20 years, that uh, you have to be in a rhythm. Uh, you have a plan. Uh, in between series, I'll ask you know, what his thoughts are uh, after they've had a chance to uh, get to with the players, uh, now especially with the iPads, make a couple, couple uh, 
get a couple of thoughts together on what they saw. And, uh, you know, as he's up in the box putting the next kind of thoughts and the drive together, uh, I'll be on the defensive side, but then I'll flip over. And, you know, if there's a takeaway early, sometimes we don't get that chance to talk much. Uh, but, you know, usually with TV timeouts and things like that, I get a chance to kind of, kind of see where his head's at, uh, give some input there. I think there's always, I don't want to say things you're setting up, but I think there's, uh, again, I use the word rhythm. I think that's the biggest way to, to uh, describe it. That is really, really critical. And, you know, um, when, when you get too much input from too many people, you start getting out of that rhythm. And I think we've done a great job. Uh, that's something I have made a point uh, ever since I became a head coach again to make sure I do. Because uh, I know when I was with head coaches who did that, how much I appreciated that. And I was fortunate for 10 years as an assistant to pretty much have head coaches that let me kind of kind of go about my business the way I thought it needed to be done. So. Left side, over to Chase. Yep. Coach Womack already commented on uh, the targeting call on Jeff Justin Jefferson. But apart from that, can you just discuss his play? I think he had 10 stops and, and his development over the last week or two? Yeah, uh, again, I think that whole linebacking core has done a lot of great things. Uh, Justin certainly flying around. Uh, we feel great about the speed he brings. Uh, he's into it. He's into it not just, you know, individually. He just, he's, he's a guy that's becoming a strong leader in our football team and the energy he brings every day. Um, you know, I just love having him in this, in this program. You know, he's involved in special teams and so, you know, not having him out there in the first half will be, you know, will be, be tougher. I mean, more, you know, just uh, he's an important part of what we do with different packages. And um, yeah, so and unfortunately that that happened late in the game. So, you know, we'll have to we'll have to work through that here in the first half of Wisconsin. Stay on the left side with Alex. You now have two games worth of, of watching film with Jalen Milrow. What do you like from what you've seen, and where do you want to see some improvement from him? Okay. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think about some touchdown throws that he's made. Uh, K-Law in the first game, scrambling on the run. Uh, the one to, to, um, to uh, let's see, Prentice uh, this week, stepping up in the pocket. I think those are things that I've seen that where he's really improved. Uh, he had a scramble uh, to Dupree uh, where he hit him along the sideline. I thought there was another one that he did a really good job and some other guys could have worked with him a little bit better. Uh, on a scramble drill. Uh, he went to the right, hit uh, Germ on a uh, scramble. And so I think eyes down the field and playing that game that he can play because people are worried about his legs where he can run and take off or he can, he can draw the attention to him and throw it. I think that's been great. Um, when we give him, when you give him looks where he can he can make decisions because there's there's a lot of times two three choices where he can make whether it's throw throw a, throw a ball to the perimeter, um, you know uh, run a running play. He might even keep it. I think he's he's getting better with every rep that we we do it. Uh, whether it's in practice or the games, you're seeing that show up, and uh, we want those options because he can do it with his arms and his legs. And you know the throw and the touchdown to uh, Ryan Williams. You know that opportunity to just rip it out there. Uh, that's something I think when we first started in spring ball, when we first started, and I think saw it in fall camp where he was getting more and more comfortable. It's not just confidence in yourself, it's confidence in the guys that are around you. And I think that's the key, you know. And so uh, he's developing that. We're talking through every little detail, um, not just with him, but we're talking it through with the other positions so that trust can happen on the practice field. We're intentional with that. And so uh, he's, he's um, I thought again, this week, he made net more strides with, with check and protections, with confidence. Um, you know, we can continue to, to work on that. Uh, he had to run around a little bit uh, at times, more than we'd like. Um, but there's a, there's a number of factors that come into play. It's not just the offensive line. It's, it's, the, whole, it's the whole group. And um, I think the areas you can continue, continue to improve, um, yeah, I, I, I think we, we just continue to work together with him to, to you know, shape and mold and uh, I've I mean I think almost every year I don't care if it's some an offense you've been with and you're in year two or year three uh, or, or or more I think there's there's an evolution you know where you have different personnel than the year before and right now we're continuing to find exactly what works for us what that rhythm is what he's exactly comfortable with 
uh, we are going to run something that I think he does a good job of talking and giving us feedback on what he likes and what he maybe is a little bit, you know, hey, let's try to hold off on that as we go through the week. And I love that. I love that because if there's any question in any player's mind, but especially the quarterback, let's let's hold off on it. You know, and that does, that's few and far between, you know, but uh, he's done a good job of just giving us feedback on what he saw and knowing that we can work together to help, you know, get him in the spots that he really wants to be in. So I think we're, we're making progress, great progress. Yeah, kind of follow up to that. Uh, notice a moment post game where you took a second to talk to Jalen and say something to him. And obviously that's a conversation between the two of you, but what, what are you willing to share about what your message was to him post game? Oh, I can't even remember exactly what I said. Uh, I've talked to, we've talked to, um, in the locker room too, just, um, I don't remember the exact words. I think it was, it was probably just a lot of like, hey, we're always learning. I think that was the general, the general theme of, of what I was sharing with him. We're always learning. Um, it, it's, it's good to f grind out a win in the fourth quarter, you know, just something along those lines that, you know, I think it had to do with you keep fighting for this reason. You know, you, you're going to find a way. You're going to break through at some point if you just keep playing the game and letting the game come back to you by competing. Tony on the left. Back to the Jefferson play, what did you see from that play? And then secondly, just as a head coach, it seems like Washington, I'm oh, sorry, Wisconsin also had a, a targeting play like that. What, what do you feel about the way that that, I guess, targeting gets called and, and the ramifications of it at, at this level? Yeah, I mean, the helmets hit each other. And so we'll wait to get the, exactly the, the feedback. Um, there's not much you can do you know, when you're out there as a coach at that moment, not, anything I say isn't going to matter when they're, when they're going through their decision. Um, and so, you know, their helmets hit and now it's just a matter of whether you met any of the, uh, any or all of the, um, ways that they determine whether it's targeting or not. So, you know, face mask versus crown, all those type of things. And I know, yeah, they got a player that's out too. And I think that was more of a mid-level hit, uh, in that game, so. Down left side to go, Steven. Coach, when you have a position group that may be struggling a bit with penalties, like what do you say to that group to keep them calm and keep them mentally engaged? Well, I think for us in that game, we, you know, last weekend, we needed to, we needed to adjust to how it's being called, you know, and I think that's what you try to say, hey, you know, it's, it's getting called, right? Getting called tighter and, you know, now we're really, um, able to look at replays and understand, oh yeah, no, if you didn't see it in the game when it happened live or why it was called, you know, because sometimes it's on the other side of the field from where our bench is at, you can go back and you can see the end zone and wide shot and try to determine how tight is it called, you know? And so, um, you know, trying to stress that, you know, we got to do a good job keeping our, and our hands were inside in a lot of cases. We just kept grabbing cloth longer when they were pulling away from us just for that split second and, you know, um, Hold, holding, getting called, and you know, unfortunately, it brought back. I, I don't know. This is a rough tally, but I, I wanted to just kind of do my own numbers. I think it was probably at least 180, 190 yards worth of offense, not counting the years, the yards that we lost because of the penalty assessment. You know, and that that's a game changer. You know, in the first half alone, I think it was probably at least 180. So we got to adjust, and and uh, you know. Um, you know, make sure we're make sure we're playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. We've got time for just a couple questions left. Let's start with Cody in the middle of the room. Here. Uh, two games in, just curious what your assessment of the secondary is so far. Yeah, they, they they've done a really good job of uh, changing it up. You know, different coverages and different game plans uh, from week one to week two. Um, you know, we uh, got the two picks to start off the season. Um, you know, and, and I thought, I mean, they were 15, I think, were they 15 of 35, I think, in the game. Uh, that wasn't their strength necessarily, but we took it away from them. And really, no explosives uh, from a from a passing, per, you know, side of the ball for them, passing for them. Uh, so I really like that. I think we, you know, different guys are coming up and making tackles. Malachi thought made did a great nice job having to come up unfortunately sometimes you know the quarterback did break contain and make some plays with his legs uh, but guys were there to go go get him on the ground and uh, live to see another play and you know that's your last line of defense and I think we've done a good job of only giving up one touchdown so far and so aside from pass coverage um, 
you know, they're, they're, uh, they're keeping the opponent out of the end zone, you know, and in the red zone especially, forcing field goals. So I, I like where we're at. Got a lot of youth that are rotating through there. Uh, that's not just promising for the growth that they're going to have this year, but promising for the future down the road. Hey, Coach. Jonathan Hoppy with WBRC. First road trip for you guys here at Alabama. Obviously, you've coached in some big games. How do you guys, how do you get these guys ready for uh, what will be a great environment up in Wisconsin? Yeah, there's nothing like playing at home here at Bryant Denny, you know, but I think there is something to knowing you're going to go into a great environment. Uh, these guys really probably haven't been there. Maybe a couple guys from the Midwest that have, that have seen that uh, or been on a visit maybe at one point. Uh, but you know, it's going to be a great atmosphere up there, and uh, it's uh, it's one that I think when you're when you're preparing to go play those games, and we'll of course have that many times here with the SEC schedule too. Uh, you know, that hostile environment, you know, uh, taking it on and and knowing that uh, you know it's kind of you versus everyone there. So uh, I think our guys are looking forward to the challenge. They're looking forward to uh, you know uh, improving on this last week and knowing that we're going to have to. Uh, in order to face uh, and get a win versus Wisconsin on Saturday. All right, let's get one last question on the left side of Jack. Hey, Coach. Coach Womack uh, touched on it, but what would you make of Tim Keenan's performance and just have you seen him continue to kind of be a leader for your defense this year? Yeah, I caught Tim yesterday. I just uh, think, I think we all are on the same page and feeling that he's done a really nice job here the first two games as well. Um, just pushing the pocket and, you know, disciplined uh, his assignment. Uh, he's just steady as a person, uh, but he's also just steady as a player. Uh, you force inside, you know, so uh, his strength is important. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's making sure he always does his job and you can count on him. So uh, a really, really key piece to the success that I think we've had defensively. Thank you, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, Roll Tide.